Good morning, my name is Luis Felipe Quiroz. I am the director of the infrastructure chapter at the Peruvian Canadian Chamber of Commerce here in Toronto. Uh, the presentation will be done in Spanish. However, I would like to thank all the support that have been received from the Canada, the Camara de Comercio Canada Peru in Lima, Carla Martinez, her general manager, and Arturo, Mar Arturo <coughs> Ruiz, uh, president of the Peruvian Canadian Chamber of Commerce here in Toronto. Uh, how, despite the fact that the presentation will be done in, in, in Spanish, you have a click, an icon on the bottom right of the of the screen, so you can click over there and you will be able to follow the presentation in English. Muy buenos días con todos, bonjour a tous. Yo quisiera empezar. So I would like to start today agradeciendo thanking la oportunidad this great opportunity acá, pues to be here with you, which is because it's a great opportunity in order to share what it means the activities that both chambers, the Lima Chamber and the Toronto Chamber of Commerce are carrying out. As a representative of the chamber, we would like to start this first activity in order to introduce and do something for the development of the infrastructure of our country. In this case, our chapter has a great task in order to collaborate and it's as well a commitment because these uh, present days are fostering these kind activities as well to find the new uh, technologies that will promote and foster the uh, innovations in Peru. Peru needs infrastructures in order to strengthen inner and outside the country, as well as logistics, the protection of the environment, logistics and uh, networks uh, in the territory in order to improve its economy. We would like to propose efficient and uh, safety transportation services with quality, as well as broadening the telecommunications fields and to achieve the commitment of the private field in order to, um, that aims for the decentralization with uh, the infrastructure, which is modern and up to date. So due to the uh, bad efficient and the lack of uh, confidence and trust uh, to uh, some of institutions, it's vital to foster these mechanisms in order to um, confirm some international agreements like the government government agreements, as an example. So these agreements are the ones that become an efficient alternative in order to direct the construction companies in our territory and foreigners, foreigners in order to join them and to ensure that all the proposals are going to be met. We are acknowledge the high costs of, uh, of having stopped some of the investment and uh, infrastructure activities that are currently are uh, facing some problems. So Canada, uh, look, look into the existing necessities in Peru. It has um, focused the activities in order to strengthen these capabilities. So our chapter uh, is inaugurating um, today their activities and we would like to collaborate not only with this kind of activities, but with some others like, uh, like for example, July the 1st, Canada has um, had uh, another anniversary that means that uh, there had become a new milestone and not only in the ad days and the modernity but as well as their collaboration not only canada has celebrated their independence day for us we this uh, july 28th we're going to celebrate 200 years of independence that not uh, always means something good. There is some still thing pending. Uh, we have a lot of expectations, some delusions, some uh, down aspects, but we have a lot of hope as a country. So today, these two chambers of commerce from Lima and Toronto, that are aiming for the support of the develop development of commercial activities between Peru and Canada. We're very enthusiastic because we are about to celebrate a friendship that this October 21st 
is going to have seven, seven years of diplomatic relations. So without further delay, I would like to welcome our guests. And for this, I would like to introduce you to Arturo Ruiz, which is the president of the Peruvian, Cham Peruvian Can Canadian Chamber of Commerce in Toronto. It's a real pleasure to, to participate in this extraordinary webinar. Uh, Mr. Eduardo González, muchas gracias por estar, por, por darnos su tiempo para, para estar con nosotros. Gracias, Carla, por tu, tu I would like to thank Dr. Eduardo González and Ms. Carla. After a long time, a webinar together with the, the Cámara de Comercio Canadiense Peruana in Peru. Luis Felipe, it's an honor to have you on the team and, and thank you for being the leader uh, in the infrastructure chapter. It's an honor, and I'm pretty sure you are going to make a difference in terms of the business relationship between Canada and Peru. No me queda nada más que agradecer al resto del equipo, y por favor, Felipe. So, without further delay, Felipe, the mic is yours. Thank you. Palabras y por todo el apoyo. Thank you very much, Arturo, for your words and your support. Now I would like to uh, introduce you to Eve Gagir as representative of the Canadian Embassy in Peru. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a great pleasure to be here. Señor Ministro, uh, Arturo, Carla, uh, Luis Felipe, um, uh, all the participants. I think it's great that we uh, we can be here today and and, and explore a bit more what uh, what what we can do uh, together to expand our our bilateral trade. Um, I think it's great that uh, both chambers are, are working together. Uh, we're uh, a partner in that. I think we're we have. Uh, um, similar goals in, in expanding our, our, our bilateral trade. Um, of course, right now there's a lot of uncertainty in Peru because of the political context, but there's one thing that is sure. Uh, it's that uh, th there's a lot of, of needs in terms of infrastructure and as you were pointing out, uh, Luis Felipe, a uh, lot of opportunities. Um, and uh, these gaps will need to be filled. Um, th there might be some delays because of the current situation, but I think that this seminar actually is, is or this presentation is great because it, it's going to give some tools to, uh, for, for the, the participant to know what are the opportunities, where, where they can make an, an, an impact, and be ready for when it starts all over again. And, and you know, because obviously it'll be a boom, um, so it'll be good to, to know what are the 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 opportunities and uh, also to have had time to look at into the question is Peru a good market for me uh, you know do we can can, can I talk with uh, Luis Felipe and Carla and the teams to know and us I guess Felix will will discuss a bit later about what what we can also do to help you uh, better understand the Peruvian market so I think it's it's great it's a good opportunity that we have that discussion right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's good. And Felix will present a bit more on on what we can do to to help support you as in Kenyan companies mostly into understanding the market and answering some of your other questions. So um, I, I think it's you know it's a, it's good time because the the economists are saying that Peru will be one of the one the country in the region that will rebound. Um, the most in the the coming months, so I think it's uh, it's good to be prepared, um, and uh, our companies will be working with the right partners. And uh, I think it's it's great. Thank you so much um, for for having us uh, being part of the discussion, and uh, I really uh, look forward uh, hearing the presentation from from the the minister and. Um, thank, thank you all for, for being present and uh, um, let, let us know about your plans and, and what you're doing in, in Peru. We'll be glad to, to be in touch. I, my connectivity is not great, so <laughs> I'll keep it short. Yeah, you're, you're fine, Ed. Thank you so much for your presentation. And because timing is everything, is that why we call this 
webinar opportunities in the transportation and communication sectors in Peru. It is a pri privilege for us uh, to have the Minister of Transportation and Communication here in Peru. He will provide an overview of the key priorities and the investment uh, opportunities for Canadian companies in Peru. Ministro Eduardo González, quisiera darle la bienvenida. El ministro es un licenciado en periodismo de la Universidad Jaime Bausá y Mesa, con estudios concluidos de maestría en gerencia pública. Minister la... Eduardo González is BA in journalism at the Bausá y Mesa University with a master's degree in public management of the Uni University and with a postgraduate course in political science with mention in parliamentary studies by the PUCP University. In addition, he holds the title of extrajudicial conciliator granted by the Semper Pax Center. With over 30 years of experience in management, direction, and consulting for the public administration, with robust knowledge on functions, instances, and parliamentary procedures, with a specialization on the modernization of government's processes, transparencies, good practices, civic participation, territorial development, decentralization, culture, housing, environment, and anti corruption policies. He currently serves as a Minister of State in the Ministry of Transport and Communications. In the same way, he has been Chief of the Cabinet of Advisors in the Presidency of the Council of Ministers in the Ministry of Transportation and Communications, as well as in the Ministry of Housing, Construction and Sanitation. Between the years 2018 and 2019, he has a member of the Organization Committee for the Successful Pan-American and Para-Pan-American Games, Lima 2019. His professional experience has also stood off uh, in the Congress of the Republic of Peru. Welcome, Minister. Thank you, Luis Felipe and all the participants. Thank you to Arturo Ruiz, to Eve, Felix, and of course to Carla for her. Uh, thank you, Luis Felipe, for your words. I would like to highlight our disposition as, as Ministry of Communications and Transportation in order to share the activities that we have been carried out. Of course, the country and in general, the world is facing very complicated context due to the pandemic and the economical crisis. Uh, in Peru, due to the political crisis and all the problems that has been um, carried out in the uh, as a result of this last election process. However, all these facts that are true and that are part of the economical and political scenario that we're facing nowadays, these can are not a, a part of the horizon that we have. Uh, we are living a very lots of uncertainty, but we have a very certain horizon because we have projects, ag actions, and teams that are developing and working in order to favor the development of the country. Without no doubt, I believe that this is marking certainty, um, predictability, and the certainty that this horizon is true. Aside the crisis, aside the results, because this great crisis is going on for some time now, however, the, the, even if the development of these projects are a little bit complicated, those projects, those milestones, and that horizon is going to continue stable. So this is the first thing that I would like to share to you. Our country, despite the weakness of its institutionality, the Ministry of Transportation and Communications had achieved in the last years, the definition of uh, a strategy, some politics, and an ensemble of milestones and projects that are going to be carried out and that now are part of our common objective and all the common actions that we are carrying out as, as a government, along with the international community, the private sector, construction companies, transnational construction companies, as well as the national ones. So with this brief introduction, I would like to start my uh, presentation. I have some slides, if you can help me sharing them. Good. So, Mr. let us know when you're ready. Okay, we're ready. 
Let's start with the first slide. Next one. So in this base, our Ministry of Transportation and Communication is located among the general governmental uh, politic on the axis of an economic growth that is um, balanced, competitive, and sustainable. And with this, we have a national policy and an infrastructure uh, plan that has been already established by the country, who has the main uh, focus to close existing gaps in order to achieve from our point of view, and this is what our ministry has been develop developing, a multimodal logistic vision that allows in general that all the transportation projects to be correlated one to another. This could be logic and obvious. However, it wasn't so clear in the previous definitions and with the actions that were carried out in the past. This is why once we have defined the national policy of competitiveness and productivity, while defining this national policy for logistic uh, development that our ministry is working on, we're looking that as part of this logistic vision, the different models of transportation to be developed. With this, I mean all uh, regional highways, local highways, national highways, and all the network of highways has to be connected to the development of ports, airports, and trainways in the middle having a digital connectivity in order to be more productive, more competitive and bring more services to our country. So these are the main pillars and access that we are developing and that are looking to close the gaps that are existing in each one of these transportation modes or models based on these main guidelines for our country. The existing competitiveness and productiveness uh, national plan uh, has different uh, projects. They are 52 out of them, 36 are under our ministry. And these are the projects that we are launching, fostering and promoting and are the ones that are marking these um, baseline in which uh, we're going to move forward, as I mentioned at the beginning. So this is being translated in the level of public investment that has been carried out. In 2021, in this year, we had allocated 10,000 uh, million soles of investment in order to develop uh, over 1,700 projects that are going to generate over 209,000 jobs directly and indirectly. All the jobs that we have fostering with the creation of a program last year that is linked to the uh, local maintenance of local highways with the regional governments and are going to be carried out up to December of this year. So the actions that the Transportation and Communications Ministry today uh, up to, to July the 12th, 2021, is generating 500,000 direct jobs in all the country. The budget that we're querying whole plus the team of our ministry has achieved higher level of execution. Uh, at last year, we were on 34% of achievements, which is an historical amount that is equal to um, 3,558 millions of solace of investment. It never in the history and the backgrounds in only six months, the Ministry of Transports and Communications has achieved this level of investment. So this is already what I tried to point out 
at the beginning of my presentation that we have a team inside our ministry that is capable to implement and to achieve the proposal goals in matters of infrastructure projects for um, trainways, airways, urban ways, and digital connectivity. So this public investment can be seen in projects that we're launching today at levels of national highways. We have 15, actually there are 18 projects that has been already uh, being executed or to be started. One of the main projects are here in this uh, PPT, in this presentation, Carretera Payasca Moyepata for 212 millions of soles. Carretera Huanuco Conocha, Bellavista Mazan, Santa Teresa Machu Picchu, projects linked to the metropolitan transportation, the line two that has been already developed despite all the inconvenience and problems faced because we had problems starting with the project. It has now a very good rhythm, which is keeping up with all the activities we are about to uh, do the excavations of the tunnel, the main tunnel. Then we have another main project of communications with broadband projects uh, for different uh, regions in our country, a total of 15 uh, regions, which has an amount of 257 million of soles up to today. And then we have the air transportation project. Uh, and for this, we have the execution of the new international airport of Chinchero in Cusco, which is a government to government uh, contract that is being appraised in 400 million soles. So next slide. Here we have and some information related to, to the project that we are developing. Here it says 15, but in reality are 18 projects of highways for national highways network. And all of these, three of them are, had already started. Um, the Santa Maria, Santa Teresa, Machu Picchu Highway, a tunnel between Santa Teresa and Machu Picchu in the highway in Cusco. So these three projects had already, had already been granted. And this is why I, I'm telling you that uh, the current projects are 18 that has been executed or are in the process of selection, like Ica, La Molina, Calcillo, Evitamiento Road, that are going through the selection process that uh, needs um, some investment around 200, uh, 2,069 million of soles so far. And as you already know, we have some agreements uh, from government to government for the construction of the new central highway and via express highway Santa Rosa for 12 million soles. Here we are pointing what our ministry is, in, is carrying out. It's not only public investment, we are fostering the private sector as well and private investment through grant agreements and concessions. Because uh, currently or before for this bid process, we had some problems uh, that are linked to uh, free the path again, any interference, which was a commitment of the government for this concession agreement from the private sex sector for the public sector. So these limitations um, were a result of delays and stops of the projects that were um, against, obviously, the bidding party activities. However, we haven't overachieved these uh, limitations. However, I can say that we are in the 50% of the road. We have already free uh, along 1,000 properties. And from these first six months of this year, we had reached 4,500 
infrastructures, which means a very important cipher, because if we compare with 2018, we had free only 1,200 um, in infrastructures. We have a goal of 10,000 in order to minimize our portfolio since now we are applying a new organization scheme and a new working rhythm, pointing out and generating from the ministry these interferences, which is very different. And of these properties infrastructure, in infrastructure, and with this we will trigger of this new project of highways, uh, as for example, the Soyana Highway, that is uh, with four, 400 million soles. Three weeks ago, we had concluded after several, several time, uh, time the Evitamiento Road in Piura, and all these uh, construction projects that are linked to the El Nino phenomenon and all the um, other projects that we are, um, well, that we want to, to achieve to free. Then we had uh, the highway number four, the highway network number four, Evitamiento Chimbote, Puerto Viru, from the northbound of our country, which was free. Now, because Evitamiento Chimbote was stopped for many, many years. However, now we had acquired a great rhythm and we were able to start with the first 10 kilometers. This is the much more longer, the longer highway in Peru, in the northbound Peru, who has over 40 kilometers. So now we are freeing um, the less uh, the properties in order to finish or end the interferences for the grantee to have the 40 kilometers in total, allowing the performing and the finishing of the project in a proper time. The highway network number five that goes to Ancon to Watch and Pativilca. That means a very big infrastructure projector. It is an uh, intersection road in Pativilca, which means an integral investment of $165 million, as well as the highway network number six from Pocusana to Ica, where um, the Paracas intersection and some other ways, regional ways that has been already finished. So this is a great start um, and it's ongoing actually, it's about to be finished. We have some other very important projects for concession as you can see here. Then we have other interventions linked to maintenance and emergencies, conservation of highways, construction of bridges and uh, some other access points, and as well as promotion activities that we are launching with Proinversion, which is the longitudinal Sierra uh, phase four and the peripheral highway ring these are all the main infrastructure projects for the main highways in our country. These four projects has been finished in 100%. Actually, the highway network number six, we are in 96%. About the presence of the government, the subnational highway system has acquired a different a strength, a very different strength that as it used to be. As we remember the responsibility of the regional governments as the regional highways. However, the urban uh, highways are in charge of the municipalities. 
However, we acknowledge that out of the 177,000, almost 100 and one, uh, 1,180,000 kilometers of highways between urban and regional, we have a very bad level of a good infrastructure of paving mostly. So we had to make very important efforts in order to intervene in the urban and regional highways. And for this, we are launching this program called Pro Region, where we had identified 15,000 kilometers of highways and logistic corridors that has been identified as part of a study that our ministry has carried out with the World Bank. And with this, we now are, we are able to start to intervene these urban roads. We had highlighted the profiles for the intervention and maintenance of 11,000 kilometers. Now, currently, we had intervened 3,800 of these uh, kilometers. We defined agreements or contracts. We had already granted the contract in order to obtain more than 3,000 kilometers, raising in this case, the level of connectivity. For this, I have to mention the bidding process. We have some that are, uh, we are, they are already finished. And with this, I want to highlight that this investment is something that can be made. We're talking of over 18,000 million of solids only for the maintenance of the regional highways, allowing to make a jump in terms of connectivity, as well as the connection of within the most important logistic corridors. From our ministry, we have designed this new program called Arranca or START with investment of 3,500 million of solids for 248 different service for 40,000 kilometers of national highways that represent the third part of all the urban highways or roads of our nation with the provincial governments improving the maintenance of these roads. Other aspect that we have developed and we believe that is very important, it's everything linked to the air transportation. As we can see, these are the actions that we are launching in level of improvement of the uh, Lima Airport Jorge Chavez, which is out of finance concession that was stopped because it wasn't able, um, we had uh, the, the, um, the ampliation that was planned uh, couldn't be carried out because the infrastructure, the properties couldn't, wasn't handled by the government but this was closed already in 2018. And from then we start with a different rhythm. And now all the ensemble of this project now has an um, advance or it's been keeping up for over to in over 21%. So for 2024, we are looking for ending this project with the new control tower that is already at 50% advanced. Last week, we actually went to in this airport with the Peruvian president with the, in order to start the working or the activities for the second road, the landing strip that should be uh, ended in October of 2022. So this year, at the end of this year, we should be granting, or actually the new uh, airport terminal should be started in order to be finished in 2024. So these, all these projects are looking to have an improved airport. Only this project is generating 2000 direct jobs that allows not only to hire um, qualified uh, workers and provide some economical development, but as well 
the training because now we're acquiring the most um, modern machinery and equipment in order to reach our goals of modernization. So with this, we're going to have professionals that are trained and already had um, experience in construction of airport and, and maintenance with, that we didn't have before. So this is one of the great results of this project, which is another achievement in addition of what implies the generation of a new uh, airport infrastructure. As the same way, we're working with the International Airport of Chinchero in Cusco here through the PMO that we had a sign off with Korean companies and representatives of the Korean government. Now we had start all the earth movement there, uh, that is very at date, mobilizing around 130,000 cubic meters of dirt of earth in order to grant some leverage to the area where the airport is going to be built. And this is equals uh, to over $600 million. This week, we are going to sign off the supervision agreement. And before the end of this month, the acquiring of the new uh, control tower the land strip and the infrastructure of the airport. Then we have some other important projects as for example, Chiclayo, when we had already concluded the emergency land strip for uh, Chiclayo, plus the maintenance and improvement and the pavement to the new pavement of uh, this existing airport because we needed to use the existing land um, this uh, land strip uh, while we don't complete the works with the new strip. It's the same way we're doing the same for Trujillo Airport. So in general, out of this package that we had granted in concession, we had achieved going forward in a, with a very, very fast pace, uh, freeing or clearing the properties, allowing in this way for the next incoming months and the next year to have all this investment committed by the concessionaries starting, intervening the most important regional airports as Arequipa, Tacna, Iquitos, and some other uh, territories of our country. In the same way, we had program uh, the intervention and in some other airports in charge of CORPAC uh, Corporation, and there are under the, our Ministry of Communications and Transportation. About port projects, maritime port, at the same way, we have 11 projects that has been developing right now. Some of them are private as Chiang uh, Maritime Air uh, Port with an investment of over 200, 1200 million dollars that uh, has been executed. And there is a tunnel that goes through from Chiang Kai directly to the uh, Maritime Port. It is being, it's under work as well as the three docks that this new port is going to have in Chiang Kai on the, the first phase. is a very important investment, 100% private, that looks, to, that looks to become a port hub for the country. There are some other interventions in the Salaveri terminal port where we are up to 78% of advance with an investment of 220, $270 million and which is very, very advanced. Actually, we had overachieved our goals in this project. The phase through three and four that were programmed for the second semester of this year and during the first semester of next year, now they are about to be concluded, as well as the phase, phase four that was already finished. So as we can see, this level of advance is very important because so far we are already generating a level of income for um, merchandise transportation that is much more than we had foreseen. 
as the same way we have other ports like San Martin, where we are um, very progress. We've had already progress. And at Lima, at level of Lima, in the next day, we're going to start the works for the Callao Terminal with DP World Concessionary. And we are concluding the addenda with this APM terminal for the north area of Callao. So both terminals, port terminals, are going to be modernized and going to be broadened. So for 2025, we would like to duplicate their capacity. So if we add to this, the, Sal the Salaberry growth, the San Martin port, the Paita port growth, and the construction of the Kankai port, we're talking that our maritime port has another new dimension. Then there is an ensemble of other terminals in Arequipa, for example, for hydrocarbon productions that has already finished with an investment of $43 million. The Multibuyas, Petro Peru, Arequipa port as well, the Mina Justa, Ica, and Apu in Iquipos, which is a port for passengers that has been already inaugurated and it's up and running, as well as the terminal of the Talara refinery. In any case, the ELO port as well should be finished, the first uh, phase of work carried out to improve their functions and activities in order to adequate the talk, granting a larger capacity. I would like to say something very quickly about the Metropolitan Line 2. As I mentioned, we're very close to the 40% of advance, 36.5 actually. But as we can see, we had already surrendered some of the areas. And now we're doing the excavations in order to start the to start building the tunnel, excavating the tunnel. If you are aware of this, we had some controversies with the concessionary because even if it's still missing uh, the definitive positive agreement, now we have a pre preliminary version in order to proceed with some investments on the, sorry, some research investigations on the investment. However, this is not stopping the project. Actually, we're allowing to go in forward with the project in with a much more clear environment. And all the problems that were linked to the excavator that could be stopped on the station of 28th of July, that's the name. Now in this um, previous agreement, it is being proven that there is no observation because the concessionary is obligated to receive the properties in 28th of July center because it looks like it ha there were a technical difference but now the excavator is going to be able to continue with the work from the station uh, that it's located in San Juan de Dios down to the Insurgentes station without any limitation or problem. So this means that the project is going to be carried out. So we are sure that after adjust some of the agreements with the concessionary, we're going to have a much more speed up rhythm. So the terms that we were envisioned for 2024 are going to be respected. We're going to be met. Now here, I would like to very briefly talk about the investments that we have scheduled for infrastructure for the following years for public works, for um, bid processes that are has already programmed, 
and that represents a big opportunity in order to join the work between national and international companies and national and international construction companies, consulting companies, in order to go forward with this project and meet our objectives. As we can see in these slides, this is the bid process that are going to be held in this year that are linked to grant access to the Chincheros Airport in Cusco. This is a very important highway that we are looking to develop with Provias Nacional. Then we have the Highway Checa Maso Cruz, which was a project that was stopped and now should be executed um, during the next weeks. We have to open the bid call as well as some other projects of conservation and improvement for around 1,200 million soles with national provias. These are going to be called in the next weeks and months. Then we have other projects, uh, regional level, carretera. We have the Highway Cusco Urubamba, Boca del Rio Tacna, Puente Rancho Romichaca, Apurimac, Villarrica, and some others. These package are going to be programmed uh, for a bid process for next year, but they already have a technical um, dossier and some studies. So we have already invest almost 4,500 million soles for this, as well as some other bid calls for uh, some other projects as Evitamiento Juliaca with approximative cost of 720 million soles, the Santa Rosa Bridge that is mainly important for Lima and Callao for 317 million soles, the Highway Ica, Los Molinos, Tambillo for 66 million soles, the Highway Selva Alegre Calzada in the province of San Martin for 38 million soles, as well as some other conservation and improvement projects for some other national highways in, in charge of Provias Nacional. The whole package is valued for over 2,300 million soles of investment. Now, as we had already mentioned, everything that is linked with the conservation and improvement projects for departmental roads and this project it is called pro region there are 25 feeding corridors in subnational highways that are linked with or are feeding the local the national highways with processes of over 1800 million solars and some other 16 additional processes that are going to be carried out next year for an investment of 10,500 million soles approximately. So we have already 20,000 million soles for investment in order to improve maintenance and grant a better service to these 25 corridors for these regional highways, which is a very relevant amount. As you already know, we had already signed off an agreement with the PMO agreement linked to the new central highway. And for the express highway Santa Rosa, which is a project that it's been developing right now, currently, we're going to convoke the engineering studies. So the construction will start around 2020 to 2023. In the same way, at levels of pro-investment, pro-inversion, we have the peripheral um, highway ring that it's been uh, in construction phase, as well to the Sierra uh, phase four that it's been under construction, which are very important investments uh, of from private investment through PP and they're going to start in the next month and going to be ended next year. In this slide, we see the several ongoing processes for concessions that are going to be called, as for example, the rehabilitation of the Piura Airport, uh, some other airports of Pucalpa, Iquitos and Tumbes that we are going to open very 
soon, as well as the rehabilitation, the process, the bidding process for the rehabilitation of airports in Trujillo, Arequipa, Juliaca, Puerto Maldonado, Tacna, Talara, and Cajamarca. There are some other inner processes for public investment. We have the Airdrome of Yurimaguas, Juan Hui, Jaén, Breu, and as well as the rehabilitation of the airport of Jaén. So these are the projects that we currently have and which we are being implemented about the airport infrastructure. About the improvement of the logistic highways, which is something that we are insisting a lot on, is the construction of infrastructure that is linked to the Callao port. This is an investment worth 125 million dollars, and we had considering that it's very important because it's going to be transcendental in order to get an open and an exit much more faster and efficient from the transportation services of uh, cargo and merchandise from in and out of the, our port. This is a goal that we have as Ministry of Communications and Transportation, as well as being a project that is going to be executed in the next months. As the same way, now we are designing the new project for the construction of the port San Juan de Marcona, which an investment of $520 million. Next slide. About our trainways, as we can see, we have some other projects at level of pro inversion. We have the trainways, Juan Cayo, Juan Cabelica, However, we couldn't uh, grant this project during the uh, call that we organized a few months ago. However, we are relaunching this bid for this project as well as the profile study of these new uh, trainways from Puerto San Juan de Marcona to Andahuaylas. This is near Las Bambas area, and this is a trainway very important with an investment of over 8,677 million soles, almost uh, over $2,000 million. And they're going to allow the exit of all or materials from this such relevant mining area, which is Las Bambas in Cusco and Apurímac going to the port of San Juan de Marcona in Ica. Here, and these are details of the Metro Lines 3 and 4 for Lima. As you know, our ministry has already approved the profile of both lines. And so we are convoking through an agreement of government to government this project. However, the timeframes were overlapping to the new presidency election. So we thought to be more convenient to have a final decision about the execution of these projects in the hands, to, to give this in the hands of the new government. In the case of the line four, we have already the technical and economical offers. And in the case of the line three, we were about to receive the same offers by the countries that uh, are interested in, the, in participating in this project. So we consider that these projects are going to be covered out in the next months because they are basilary uh, for our um, trainways and highway structure of Lima. And in order to make our current transportation services for urban Lima to be much more modern and efficiency, so we are sure that the new government is going to put these projects in their agenda. We have the resources already for their execution, which are included in the multi-year uh, plan of the Ministry of Communications and Transportation, and were thought to be or are part of the budget programs that the Ministry of Finance and Economics has already. And actually, this is part of the anti-cyclic policies that we have in order to generate these huge investments in infrastructure that allows a growth, economical growth for our country. 
Other of the aspects that we had already carried out with a special effort is the digital connectivity projects. And here we can see in this slide the actions that had been implemented. One is the public investment that we developed that is linked to the reactivation of those projects that we were executing at uh, our ministry level with Pronatel. So in October, last October, last November, we had already three regional projects that were working out of 15 that we had already contracted. So now oh, oh, 50, over the 15 agreements. So now we have already six projects that are undergoing and the uh, other eight are going to be finished in the next months. Our goal is to reach to 10 projects that are starting functioning on July. So that at the end of this month, in order to end 11 projects this year and the other four during the first months of the next year. From here, we have three additional projects that are being formulating the signing. So we are opening the, the, the bid process and some others are about to be finished. And all these projects are linked to the developing of this kind of infrastructure for the Amazon area of our country. So besides the regional projects of optic fiber, we decide to implement a program called Todos Conectados, Everyone Connected, with actions in order to generate services in the last mile. So for the rural um, population, the ones that are much uh, further in the further areas of our country, in order to grant them connectivity. And for this, we had activate four lines of work that we think that are going to give us important results in order to close this connectivity gap. First, we will uh, install satellite internet in the Amazon region of Ucayali and some others that we had already started with these satellite antennas for educational and sanitary institutions in order to allow them the connectivity with a low cost that will allow to connect in a radius, uh, proper radius surrounding these infrastructures for the citizens of the area that were financiated by Pronatel and our government and our ministry in order to grant connectivity to the population, the citizens, institutions that didn't have any kind of connection. For this, now we are enabling all major squares in all the cities in this area. We are giving Wi-Fi services. We have already 500 major squares that are already connected. At the end of the year, we would like to connect 3,500 major squares and plazas and for the next year to have all the main squares of our country with this Wi-Fi connection for free. Uh, this uh, it's being done with optic fiber, with agreements government to government and some other with a direct investment in order to grant connectivity to all these citizens. As well, we have approved 1,000 centers of digital access. These are centers that are going to allow to the population to own technology, this digital training, which are vital for the, for the senior uh, citizens or the citizens that speaks uh, originary languages as Quechua and Aymara, or for the citizens that have any kind of speech, special ability. So this is a project that looks to uh, develop digital capabilities with an agreement with in agreement with the, with the municipality municipalities of different regions of our country, and that we consider very relevant for the most far away towns to own internet and use it in order to improve the level of access to training 
to communication, and in order to improve their lifestyle and their well-being. In parallel, we have developed some policies for private investors, private operators, for allowing them to invest in order to broaden the connectivity, existing connectivity. And for this, we do it with the payment of a canon in order to broaden their coverage for the, the renewing right of enabling titles with some commitments and with these broadband bidding processes in order to obtain this broadening of connectivity as part of the repayment system towards the state. So the payment of this canon by coverage will allow us to get investment of over 1,500 million soles for this. So next week, actually this week with a private operator, we're going to connect this very, very far away uh, city which the con with the installation of the first and digital antenna in order to broaden the connectivity for the most rural and far away cities of our country. Besides this, as you may know, I would like to tell you that we have the Dorsal Optic Fiber National Network project, which is a project developed by the government and it was under concession, but due to the characteristics of the agreement and some other limitations, <clears throat> we weren't able to um, perform or carry out this digital highway to get to any corner of our country in a much more convenient way because it was underused or underutilized in three or five percent we're about to renew the contract. Actually, we're ending the contract with the current concession party in order to relaunch this project because it's very important in addition to the project of optic fiber and plus all these new policies of improve the connectivity of the country. We know that this project will, is going to have a new phase and is going to get higher possibilities to be developed. Here, in this next slide, in addition of all the actions that I already presented to you, here we see in detail the information of the promotion activities of for investment linked of this uh, communication between bands AWS3 and 23 gigahertz. So I has, I, as I had already said, as part of the bidding call that we are carrying out with prevention we have already opened on may of this year the call now we are in the process of the reception or the submission of the envelope number one in order to grant the project on september of this year and as i was already explaining it these kinds of projects has an investment committed when they're going to pay, the, 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 the winners are going to pay a canon in order to broaden the coverage of, of for connectivity. We had three regional projects for optic fiber that unfortunately weren't carried out. We had a concessionary with a controversy so we could to and the contract in 2018, uh, so we couldn't make a call before we had to settle that contract. So we are ready already to open the bid with an investment for this project with an investment of 240 millions in order to connect 528 localities in Piura, 1100 in Cajamarca, and 54 in Tumbes with an investment of 984 million soles for this regional 
projects in upper bound our country. Finally, we have the regional projects of optic fiber for the Amazons regions in our country. Now, there we are very, very far behind. Actually, we were able to start the process of the technical dossiers in order to open the bid for Putumayo, Manceviche, and some other very far away cities of the Amazons. So we have calculated that over 1,000 localities and over 400 institutions are going to have benefits after this project. Now they are connected by these satellite um, services that I presented to you before. But we are sure that optic fiber are going to allow to replace the satellite internet service that it, they currently have. So this has the result, as a result, to reach a market that is going to have already expertise in connectivity, but they're going to need to broaden and to improve the connectivity because today, they had already satellite internet as a result of the projects of our Ministry of Transportation and Communications. So these are the projects that our ministry are carrying out. And as, as I was saying, this is part of a very certainty horizon that had a very uncertainty background. However, will help us to point the continuation of the activities from the Ministry of Transportation and Communications. So these are part of our plans, are parts of our general politics. They are part of the um, included plans in all instances in our ministry and by our stakeholders like Provias and some others. These uh, uh, economical resources are already considered in the budgets for this year and the next years as well are going to be included. And we are firmly the side as ministry with all the teams correlated to launch this because we have already all the commitments with the local and regional governments with, that had participated in the design of these projects. So now we are sure that these projects are part of a new level of infrastructure that are going to get our country, a new level of infrastructure that will allow us to say that we are going to be all connected and all the efforts of our ministry are worth it because we were able to connect the lives of Peruvians and to, to make them more connected will means to have the support, to have a much more uh, job possibilities with the support of our friend country that are much more advanced, like for example, Canada, that we don't, besides to sharing 77 years of diplomatic relations, uh, with, with, we have a huge work developed in matters of infrastructure, of achievements together as countries. So this is what I had prepared for you today. And I'm here in order to comment to discuss any of the issues and projects that I had presented. Thank you very much, Minister Gonzalez. It was very interesting to be able to, be able to know directly from you all the work where uh, your ministry it is related and committed with, with such enthusiasm. In, with only eight months in this in charge, but we see that this work will be sustainable through all these years that are coming, uh, giving to or being the witness or testimony of the professionalism of our country. So we are uh, about to finish today. So I would like to invite Felix Jimenez 
as representative of the commercial chapter of the Canadian Embassy in Peru in order to give us some approximation about what it means, the work that the TCS, which is a trade commission of service, in order to support the Canadian companies working in international projects. Uh, good morning, Felix. Good morning, Luis Felipe. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Minister. I would like to make a very brief presentation about what we are doing currently in our daily job at our embassy. My presentation is going to be held in English because I would like to focus to those companies. Uh, at the Canadian Embassy in Lima, Peru. I'm in charge of the infrastructure and transportation piles here. Um, first of all, I want to I want you to know that we realize how hard and unexpected this year has been. And today, if there's one key message I want to get across is that we're here to help companies uh, navigate the challenges by taking their business global. Uh, next slide, please. Today, I want to give you a background on how the Trade Commissioner Service or the TCS can help uh, companies tap into international markets. Siguiente slide, por favor. Uno más. Y uno más, por favor. The TCS, TCS offers. So our expertise and support can help Canadian companies grow around the world, which is why Canada has had a trade commissioner uh, the service for 125 years. Siguiente slide, por favor. Next slide. We help companies grow globally through expert sales, foreign investment, and other types of international commercial activity. As the world economy deals with the impacts of COVID-19, uh, we're here to help Canadian business navigate market changes and challenges to stabilize, build resilience, and grow internationally. We do this through our network of trade commissioner in cities worldwide, and also through our funding and support programs and initiatives. Next slide, please. Siguiente, siguiente diapositiva. Un par más, por favor. Siguiente. Okay. One, of key, one key to our successes is our people. Actually, we're able to help companies expand around the world and know how business is done in other markets because of our unbeatable network of trade commissioners. And working with us is free. That's probably uh, an information that not many companies know. Working with us is free. The TCS service are offered free of charge to client companies and organizations that uh, meet the following criteria. They have meaningful economic ties to Canada, uh, capacity for and commitment to internationalization and a good potential to add value to the Canadian economy. When a company is ready and thinks they, they would fit as a TCS client, our offices across Canada are the best way to first connect with the TCS to prepare and plan. We provide on the ground service to Canadian companies, meeting and building a relationship and making sure they're ready to do business abroad. If we know more about a company, we can actually provide them with better services. Once a client company is ready to grow internationally, our regional offices across Canada also connect them with our offices abroad, where we have our trade commissioners working on the ground in the market. Siguiente diapositiva, por favor. But what exactly do the trade commissioners do to help reduce risk and save time? Well, actually, we provide key market insights and practical business advice. This is particularly important as each country is experiencing different reopening contexts and stages, and may experience evolving supply chain disruptions and closures. We also help open the door to new business opportunities globally. We also identify qualified business contacts, and finally, we resolve complex business problems in foreign markets. We can also help Canadian companies gain a competitive advantage by doing business in a socially and environmentally responsible manner, which can mitigate risk, promote innovation, train a company's brand and improve their bottom line. Particularly as the government of Canada expects Canadian companies operating abroad to respect human rights, operate lawfully and be socially and environmentally responsible. Siguiente, por favor. 
Our DCS network also helps Canadian exporters leverage business opportunities through free trade agreements or FTAs as we know them. FTAs help diversify export markets, generate more wealth and get more Canadians involved in international trade as they can provide competitive advantages. Canada has uh, 15 ratified FTAs enforced with 49 countries and Peru is no exception. Our, uh, our current FTA is already uh, in, uh, activated uh, over 10 years ago. Our network of FTAs give Canadian exporters access to 1.5 billion customers, yes, customers across the world, making our country a global trading hub. Next slide, please. Siguiente. Y una más, por favor. Finally, I also want to refer that another way that we traditionally help connect Canadian companies with potential buyers or potential partners uh, is the trade events in Canada and abroad that we organize through TCS booths, Canadian pavilions, expert cafes, and business to business meetings. Actually, um, the Chamber of Commerce here in Lima and also the Chamber of Commerce there in Toronto are uh, very good partners in this sense for us, for the Trade Commission of Service. The TCS also organizes trade missions and business delegations for key trade events or business groups. This helps companies explore opportunities and connect with the right business partners and customers in your market. However, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we've shifted uh, to offering virtual options that I think uh, everybody's now very used to. There are all, also other dimensions of diversity, like diversity in the ownership of companies that are exporting. And actually, the TCS is proud to celebrate Canada's rich uh, diversity of exporters and provide support for expert ready and expert active business owned by women, indigenous people, uh, visible minorities, uh, the community LGBTQ2, and uh, younger people. Uh, we offer a variety of services to these groups, for example, group specific trade missions and events. Uh, those help exporters in inclusive trade groups to better access the market and the right interlocutors and increase their chances of making a solid connection. Next slide, please. The siguiente. Y una más. La última. Okay. In summary, please keep in mind what the TCS do, what our services are all about, and get in touch with us in case um, you are interested in knowing more about the Peruvian market. When you ever, whenever you feel that the time is right, we're here to help you. We will leave our, I'll leave my contact information here in the chat, so you can contact me anytime you feel the time is right. Thank you very much, Felipe. Adelante. Thank you very much, Felix, for your presentation. Uh, we have the opportunity. We had the opportunity to witness all the work that you have been done in the past years. And we are completely sure that you will be there to support all the Canadian companies in future investment and business opportunity in Peru. Muchas gracias, Félix. Merci beaucoup. Eh, Ministro González, quisiera invitarlo unos cinco minutos. Estamos por acabar. So, la... Ministry, we are about to close our presentation. I would like to invite you in order to know uh, the final remarks about what this presentation mean, meant. So as a conclusion, I would like to tell you that there is no doubt that it's very motivating listening to the minister, the Ministry of Transportation and Communications about this new rhythm of work, as well as it's very interesting to know that only 25% of the ensemble of the highway network at regional, national, and urban level has been constructed. So that means that there is a long way to run about everything that means the execution of these projects for highway construction. It was very interesting as well, uh, getting to know that there is a very much important advance in the profiles for maintenance and conservation, preservation of um, roads which is generating an opportunity for Canadian companies that can be uh, partners eventually with Peruvian uh, companies for the execution and the realization or the design of the studies. It is preliminary studies. It's very important to say that one of the major components are these agreements of government to government or the direct participation of foreigner companies, which means uh, transferring of knowledge 
which is a main topic that has been put it on the table since 2017, which the first agreement government to government was signed out. This uh, transference of technologies will uh, give the opportunity that Canadian capabilities could be transmitted to Peruvian companies in order to sustain the growth of the project during time. I believe that you had given uh, great news, uh, Minister Gonzalez, announcing the supervision contract for the Chinchero Cusco International Airport that is going to be signed off, uh, signed out very briefly, which is the beginning, means the beginning of a very important development for the economics of Peru. This project was very wanted by the citizens and that is proving the respect on the international agreements that this country have. Besides all the projects of uh, highways and roads that you had presented to us, the Longitudinal uh, of La Sierra, stage four, there are huge projects that had a very great impact in order uh, that is a response of the, of the efforts to improve the wellness of the Peruvian citizens it was very important. Then you had mentioned politics, which are like this, right? Uh, the postponing uh, some of the projects due to the transpolation or the, transla uh, the translapping with uh, the presidential elections. However, the state uh, politics has considered these projects not only as important, but had already allocated the budget for them. So there is a great motivation because if Peru, as you had announced, has the capability to um, finance this kind of uh, projects with um, a multi-year, by-year project and uh, the budget and the budget of the Ministry of Finances and Economics. So we're talking of a several dossiers and agreements to be signed. And I, but I would like to insist on the fact that the most important aspect here in order to grant the certainty that these projects are going to be carried out in the future is the general politic that is existing already related to the great relevance of this infrastructure project. And there are different executor institutions inside the Ministry of Transport that has already advanced in the calling to bid for this project. We're talking of equipment projects, infrastructure projects, as well as concessions. So it is very, very interesting for companies that are looking for invest these kind of resources in countries like Peru. And the most important of all is the political wellness. And we can see here that whoever is going to get the, the next mandate, presidential mandate, uh, they know about the relevance of the continuity of these projects. So I would like to say goodbye to greet and thank the Canadian Peruvian Chamber of Commerce in Lima under their general manager, Carla Martinez, as well as the president of the Peruvian Canadian Chamber of Commerce in Toronto, Mr. Arturo Ruiz which has granted all the trust in us in order to inaugurate this first chapter of infrastructure in order to promote the development of the infrastructure of Peru through the participation of the uh, Canadian corporations. Thank you all very much for your presence. Our 10.28 in the morning Lima time, we're respecting the time, so we would like to thank you Minister, I don't know if you want to uh, give us some closing words and some reflections about what will mean the presence of Canadian companies and enterprises in Peru. Well, I would like to thank you all to listen 
to participate, I would like to repeat our disposition from the government, from our ministry, from all Peruvians that we are waiting for you, open arms, in open arms, to all our Canadian friends and all Canadian enterprises. Peru is an ongoing country that needs to be constructed. We're about to be to turn 200 years. And these 200 years has been a road where in, in which we had making some steps in our development. However, now our commitment to close these gaps in infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure are set. But for this, we need the joint work and the collaboration among Peruvians and with the support of all the brothers, all the friends, uh, all the, 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 the companies of some friend countries, because the community more than everything needs to us to share our experiences, our virtues, our willingness in order to work in a harmonic development that is going to be sustainable. So this is the main challenge that we are going to face from now on. Thank you very much to all of you for all your great job. And from the Ministry of Transportation and Communication, maybe some other person is going to be seated here to say the same thing that I'm doing, presenting our portfolio of projects to tell you what it's going to be carried out and that our uh, the doors of our country are open in order to um, gain from your expertise, your technology, your knowledge and your human warmth that is very characteristic from our friends from Canadian. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister Gonzalez. This strategy, uh, public and private, has been working very well. So thank you very much for changing, uh, exchanging uh, this information and the willingness to promote um, these projects in order to grant the development of our country. Thank you very much.